Hi, this is Salman Alana in Manos Brilakis, and this is case 200 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. It has been more than five years since the first case was created, and I am very grateful to all the people who contributed to the creation and viewing of those cases. This case is about a patient who had three CTOs. The patient was uh, morbidly obese. He presented with worsening chest discomfort and dyspnea, and he was uh, found to have a markedly positive stress test. So he was sent for coronary angiography that demonstrated a CTO of the LAD. There was a CTO of the right coronary artery with the distal vessel filling through collaterals, and there was also a circumflex CTO. And here is the right coronary artery showing the occlusion in the mid-segment, good quality vessel proximal and distally. So the patient was taken off the table and there was a hard team discussion. However, the patient eventually declined surgery and he was referred for complex percutaneous coronary intervention. Our plan was to first attempt PCI of the LAD CTO and then potentially do also the right depending on the setting and how easily the LAD could be recanalized or not. This is the dual injection. Injecting from the right coronary artery as well as the left main, we do have femoral radial axis. And what we can see actually on the dual injection is that the LAD is a very favorable CTO. We can see it's a very short occlusion. There seems to be some tapering of the proximal vessel and there's some distal disease, but it's a very short occlusion. So we have a relatively blunt uh, entry, but again, there may be a microchannel there. The length is very short. The distal vessel is of good quality, although there's some disease there. And then the collaterals were actually mainly epicardial. There's this branch from the conus of the right coronary artery. This is a Vucens collateral, but this was not a good branch for the retrograde approach. So our plan here was to use undergrade wiring. If it didn't work, to go with undergrade sexual reentry. As we had hoped, uh, there was very easy crossing with a uh, filter XTR and an MCATH flexi. Easy crossing of the wire distally, microcatheter was advanced, and we were able to predilate the lesion, restoring good undergrade flow. Placed a 3.5 millimeter stent that was uh, post dilated with a 4.5 millimeter balloon more proximally. And then by IVUS, the vessel actually was fairly large, was fairly aneurysmal in that segment. So we ended up placing a 5 volt stent that uh, provided a nice result. There was some disease in the more proximal segment of the LAD. However, by IVUS, the minimum lumen area was 9 mm square. We did not think there was a need for performing additional PCI of the LAD. So should we stop at this point, or should we proceed with trying to recanalize the right coronary artery? And we had only used about 70 mLs of contrast and less than one gray of radiation. So we decided to proceed with a PCI of the RCA CTO. The problem with that CTO is that there was proximal camp ambiguity. There are all these bridging collaterals. The length is about 20 to 25 millimeters. There is heavy calcification of the vessel. And although the uh, distal RCA is of good quality, again, it's hard to know how to approach this undergrade. Fortunately, there were septals coming from the LAD, and now that the LAD was recanalized, we thought I could potentially use the septals to go retrograde. So the plan was to try retrograde through septals. If it didn't work, try to clarify the ambiguity and go undergrade either with wires or with ADR. We were able to advance a guide wire into the septal. We can see the recently placed uh, stand. Uh, but uh, it was fairly um, easy with a large bend on the guide wire to enter into one of the septal branches and then advanced uh, the microcatheter further down. And then we switched to a CM black and performed surfing. And we actually had uh, a fairly easy crossing from the LAD all the way to the PDA. This is the contralateral injection. The course was a little unusual. That's why we were concerned that we may not have been in the vessel. However, we can see clearly that we are in the vessel and there is just a tortuosity. The wire was actually entering into the right posterior lateral. We were able to withdraw the guide wire and eventually redirect it towards the distal right coronary artery. So here it goes nicely towards the RCA. 
And then uh, we were unable to advance the MCAT flexi, but we were able to advance a careful microcatheter all the way to the distal cap. And this is a distal tip injection, showing that there is also a relatively blunt cap on the distal cap. So we tried with different guide wires. This is a Gladius Mongo and a Pilot 200. We we're trying to knuckle them, try to advance them close to the undergrade guide wire, but we had significant difficulty. Uh, it looks like the guide wire entered into a side branch. And then we switched to a little stiffer penetrating wire, the Gaia X2, that seemed to advance a little more. However, the course is not following the course of the undergrade guide wire. So we stopped doing that and we did another distal tip injection. And unfortunately, we do have some staining at the distal cap. So we have a small wire perforation distally. Fortunately, we had not advanced the microcatheter further down, and we see that the contrast is actually remaining in that segment of the vessel. So we ended up leaving the retrograde wire as a marker. We did not want to perform too many crossing attempts since we have this issue with distal wire perforation. But then we tried to cross with an undergrade guide wire. And this is a Pilot 200 undergrade. We were actually trying to do the base technique, the balloon-assisted subintimal entry and advance uh, a wire in the subintimal space or extra plug space undergrade. But then we advance the Pilot 200 and now it seems to track along the course of the vessel and is moving in sync with the retrograde guide wire. So what has happened here is the undergrade wire and the retrograde wire are both located within an RV marginal. The options here are to advance uh, a dual loom microcatheter and then try to wire with the over the wire port or to try to pull the microcatheter back and redirect and we decided to do that. So we pulled back the microcatheter and then pulled the wire back and then switched uh, for a Xeon black guide wire and this wire now is moving along the course of the retrograde guide wire. So we ended up achieving undergrade crossing by using the retrograde wire as a marker of the position of the distal true lumen. The problem now was that uh, we had difficulty advancing a balloon. We could not cross through the mid RCA, but eventually after using a, a subfire pro balloon, as well as a seven friends guideliner, we were able to advance equipment and then we serially predilated the lesion with up to 4.0 millimeter and C balloons. We then placed two drag eluting stents, 4 by 38 and 4 5 by 38. The stent did not expand very well, which raised some concern, but then we post dilated with a 4.5 NC at 20 atmospheres, and the stent expanded nicely. So we did have a nice result with Timothy flow in the RCA and no stent under expansion, both in geographically as well as by ultrasound. And here are the final images. We have a good result in both the LAD as well as the right coronary artery. The patient did well. Uh, it was 67 minutes of fluoro time, 2.2 gray, which is remarkable given that the patient uh, was so heavy, BMI of 49, and is a testament to the new systems that can help reduce the radiation dose with the new X-ray machines. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that in patients who are morbidly obese, surgical revascularization may not be the best option. Second, we had multiple CTOs in this patient. And what happened is we recanalized one CTO, the LAD, and then used that vessel to go retrograde and recanalize the RCA. So recanalization of one CTO may be very useful for going retrograde and recanalizing another CTO. Second lesson is that the retrograde wire escalation can lead to a perforation. We had a blunt distal cap and the wire exited. Fortunately, it was just a wire perf. We did not advance our microcatheter. And because of that, we did not have any significant consequence. We were then able to cross under grade. We had no problems. The technique we used for crossing here was just marker. So the retrograde wire was in a marginal branch and was the sign or a mark for where to advance our undergrade guide wire. We did have a balloon uncrossable lesion and the combination of a trap liner or a guide liner and a 1.0 millimeter balloon was successful. And then we almost had a, a negative surprise when the balloon of the stand did not expand very well, but eventually it did after high pressure. So the lesson here is that you want to predilate 
with a balloon sized one to one to the target vessel prior to placing a stent to make sure that there is uh, not an undilatable lesion that might need additional preparation, for example, by using a therectomy. Thank you.